Hello everybody, my name is Steven and welcome to another Pixel for Life video tutorial. Today is day number two of our designing a web element every day for one week. Last week we designed, or last day, yesterday, whatever, uh, we designed the search item, uh, the search bar. Today we are going to be uh, creating a download now button. Uh, this can be easily changed into view my portfolio or any kind of button you want. It's just going to keep this kind of style and uh, you'll see what it looks like. So to begin, just like last time, I want to get my proportions correct. So I'm just going to type out, I'm going to click and drag with the text tool and type download now. And I'm using Helvetica new, uh, condensed bold, 18 pixels, and white. Click the check mark and that is going to be our proportion sizes right there. So now I can zoom in and expand this a little bit to fill the screen and I can start creating the box. So click your rounded rectangle tool, hold down Alt and click New Layer. So it makes it a new layer below the Download Now button. And then just click and drag out. And we're going to do something about, something like that. I'm going to leave a little bit of overhang. Um, let's see if you can see that. You can see the overhang because I'm going to have a little icon right now, uh, right over here, like a circle with an arrow inside of it. All right, let me delete this effect on here. And then to get the colors, we're going to pretty much steal them off of this button right here. So what I want to do is double click on here, click the background, and then drag to the screen. And that's going to be our base screen. And then, so I'm going to keep that base screen, and then I'm going to double click it. Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. What I'm going to do is um, now that I have the size, proportion size, I'm going to duplicate this layer. Uh, this is going to be, um, we're going to kind of build like a stack, and this is how I use vectors in Photoshop. If you watched any of my other tutorials, I like to have a stencil pretty much in the background, the background shape, and then use a clipping, clipping mask to um, stylize the shapes above it. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. So this one just stays plain, and we're going to add a stroke to that one pixel and this is the background layer and it's going to be a dark green something like that just very simple and then that's all we're going to do do to that then this one we're going to right click it and click on create clipping mask and now it's going to constrain that to here so no matter what size we make this shape um, if I click on it and I drag this out nothing shows uh, it just stays inside of these uh, this background shape because it's clipped to that. So hopefully that didn't confuse you too much. Now to this one what I want to do is double click on it and I am going to add a inner shadow and click on control H to hide the guidelines that you can see around vector objects kinda hides it and then I am going to make it white change the style to um, I guess you can just leave it a normal and then lower the opacity, something like 50, just so it has a little bit of a bulge up on top there. I'm going to change this to 2 pixels so it kind of kind of has some depth, depth to it. Alright, very good. And then I am going to add a inner glow. And you don't have to copy these at all. Uh, I'm just going for some nice styling. And this is what I found that looks nice. So for the inner glow, I'm going to keep that on screen. I'm going to change this to white because I don't need the, that yellowish color. And then change the size down to 1 to make it a little bit sharper because you can kind of see it's blurred. So 1 gives it a nice sharp, nice crisp sharp sharp look. And then just lower the opacity to about 50%, whatever. And don't have to be too precise with it. Um, and then I want to add a little bit of depth so I'm going to have a gradient and it's going to be black to white. And I'm going to change this to overlay and you'll see what that's going to do made it look really nice so before and after it's I love it I'm gonna change the scale up so it kind of stretches that gradient and then uh, let's see and then I'm going to hmm it normally drags the gradient when I move this but I guess it's not doing that for now uh, that's fine I'm just gonna turn down the opacity to about um, 
I don't know, we'll go with 60%. That looks good. Click OK and zoom out and you can see how sweet that's looking. I'm going to center this text a little bit better. Download now. And then let's stylize this and we're just going to do something very basic to it. Just double click and then add a drop shadow. Keep it black on multiplied. A distance of 1 and size all the way down. You can see it gets a little bit of depth. And you can just drop that opacity down way low. 40% should be fine. Click OK. And you can see how this is looking. Um, I would prob probably uh, hug it if I could. So I'm going to just make this stroke a little bit lighter. Go to that bottom layer and then just lighten it up a bit. Looks good. And now what I want to do actually is create a, um, a circle. So I'm going to zoom in zoom way in and then grab my vector shapes and I'm going to create a circle and this is going to have an arrow pointing down inside of it so make it about about that big might have to resize it but for now that looks good I'm going to double click it and I'm going to make it a dark gray I'm going to actually get it from this right here just so it kind of matches click OK and then let's do a little bit of styling on this we're going to give it an inner shadow to give it some depth and the shadow um, Let's see, maybe a distance of two, bring down the stroke. Um, I don't know, you can mess with it, that looks fine to me. And then I'm going to give it a stroke around everything. I'm going to make it white, uh, white, and one pixel. And then I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay, so it kind of, you can see on this darker area, it gets a little bit darker in the light on the top. It gives, it gives some nice depth, and then I'm going to bring down, down the opacity way down to about 22. Alright? And if we zoom out, we can see what that looks like. Beautiful. And now, what I want to do is have the arrow kind of punched out of the center of it, and you'll, you'll see what that looks like. So I'm going to go to my vector tools, and go to custom shape, and I'm going to grab that arrow. Just the basic arrow right here. Grab that zoom in and then I'm going to click on this third button on the top right here and what that does is punches out of the vector shapes so I'm going to hold down shift and drag that and you can see it kind of punched that out of there and then go to your path selection tool which is that black arrow click it control T and then holding down shift I'm going to rotate it and then just center it by eye like that looks groovy can't believe I just said that word. And now this shape looks a little bit big. So what I'm going to do actually is select everything and then just scale it down a little bit. Like that. Looks good. Zoom out. And there you have it. A very nice looking download button that matches this search bar. Um, the text could probably be slightly larger. Maybe we'll go with 19 pixels. And then just recenter it. Something like that. And that's all there is to it. Let's make this neater. Let's do button background. And then we'll do color. And then this will be arrow. And then we'll drag the download now to the top. And then we can group that all together and name that button download. There you go. And that's going to finish off day two of this tutorial. Tune in tomorrow for another sweet episode of creating a website element. Take care and be sure to subscribe and check us out on Twitter, Facebook, Google+. Um, I'm not sure what else we got. Email us. We can stay connected so many ways. Just check us out and uh, see you next time.